Hey everybody, it's Zach. Welcome back to the Heroverse. And guys, I just got done with All American Season 5, Episode 10 called OPP. Uh, guys, all I can really say is, is that this was definitely the best episode of this season, I think, by far. I've had a, a lot of problems with this season, as you guys know. I haven't been loving that we really haven't been like back. It really hasn't felt like the traditional All American. I feel like the show really has took a downfall from like the prior seasons of, of seasons one, two, three, and four with like the high school episodes and really diving deep into football. I feel like this show has really become more of like a all out drama show now. I feel like we just really haven't been getting much of football, but it feels like, you know, this, I like, I haven't really been like, you know, loving, it. I've been missing that side of all American, but like this episode, I feel like really got me invested again. This episode really like made me happy and really made me invested. Like I I haven't felt this way in a while with all American feeling like that and like that invested so, you know, what our characters really have been doing. Um, besides in last week's episode, I feel like, you know, we really kind of, you know, things started really, you know, uh, gearing up with a lot of characters. And I was really excited to see where, like, where things were going with certain characters. But in this episode, like, it really made me invested. Um, people that, you know, we ended up seeing back in this episode, we got to see Jamie back in this episode. And we got to see JJ back in this episode, finally. It's episode 10, and we finally got to see JJ back. I can't remember in what episode we, like, we saw him leave. But it's been a minute since we've seen JJ, and I was really happy to see JJ in this episode. And of course, in this episode, uh, you know, Spencer officially knows that uh, Billy is now head coach, or going to become head coach at GAU. And that was it, that was very interesting because he knows that you know he found out from from the principal over at GAU. He didn't find out from, you know, Jordan and he didn't find out from Billy. He found out in last week's episode that they both lied and Jordan had more secrets and it wasn't about him dating Layla. It was about the fact that he's been lying about Billy being the head coach of GAU and he, you know, and that they were keeping the secret from Spencer. So in this episode, in the beginning of this episode, he actually plays with Jordan as we saw, as we kind of saw from the promo of him pretty much, you know, telling, you know, scaring Jordan, you know, like surprising Jordan, just sitting there and like startled Jordan. And he's like, oh yeah, you scared me. He's like, yeah, I don't like to be scared either. And I also, you know, I don't like surprises. Yeah. He's like, oh, I don't like surprises either. And he's like, also Jordan, I don't like, you know, I don't like uh, lie liars either. I don't like to be lied to. And essentially, you know, makes Jordan fess up to the fact of I knew you knew about Billy being head coach and the fact that you lied to me, even though Jordan's like, you know, well, I, 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 I told my dad that I wanted, I was going to give him until, you know, I was going to give him one more day or until the end of the night to tell you, or I was going to tell you today, like, you know what I mean? But of course, Spencer's not having it because he doesn't like liars. And, you know, I really did love the way he, like, you know, approached that on the fact of, oh, I wanted to see if you would lie to me again. And he was kind of, like, getting ready to the point, like, I, I did actually know this is something I've been wanting to tell you. So, you know, going into the episode, you know, it's Spencer really being upset, the fact that everybody's been kind of lying to him on the fact of Billy, you know, you know, you know, Billy not actually trying to, like, about Billy getting the job and really, like, kind of screwing over Kenny and even though that's why Spencer approached Billy is to get Kenny in, you know, the coaching position. So in reality, Spencer feels like, you know, he, I got like, I, I feel betrayed. I feel betrayed. You know what I mean? I feel betrayed by Billy because, you know, he, you know, I thought he was the dude that would look out for other people, but he was looking out for himself and he took the coaching position. I'm angry at him. And I'm also angry that he didn't tell me and he, and Jordan didn't tell me. And, you know, he ends up finding out in the episode that, of course, Grace didn't tell him either, his mo his own mother. And, you know, he's, like, upset at her as well about, like, you know, I guess, you know, we both underestimated Billy. And, you know what I mean? And she's like, I can come out on the next flight to make sure everything is okay. And he's, like, not even talking to his mom. And really, in this episode, really, Alicia is trying to get closer to Spencer. They're officially boyfriend and girlfriend, but, you know, she he is pushing her out. He's not letting her in. And that's pretty much the, the the big thing is that she would expect that, you know, you said that you wanted to make this work, but you're not letting me in. You're not like, even though you, I could tell something is wrong, but you're not, you're not telling me what's wrong. And in reality, she knows that, you know, you would tell Olivia what's wrong. Like she knows it. You know what I mean? She knows that she's still kind of being, Spencer's like putting her at arm's length and it really isn't all in with the fact of him saying he wanted to actually make this, like make this relationship work. So that was very interesting. He's kind of pushing her away in this episode. And the only one that really, you know, is on a mission to get close back to Spencer is Olivia. And we found out at the end of last week's episode, end of episode nine, when uh, Olivia was talking to great, uh, Olivia was talking to Laura saying that I want Spencer back. And pretty much, you know, that's the mission of Olivia in this episode. She's trying to get Spencer back in this episode. 
And, you know, it, it's a great way on how, like, on her mission, because she ends up telling Layla, like, yo, like, I want, I want Spencer back, you know, and she's like, oh, that was random, what happened to you and Noah? And she's like, oh, well, me and Noah, that's just, that he's my co-worker, and that's not what I want, I want to be back with Spencer. And pretty much, you know, uh, Layla concocts an idea of, you know, Jamie is, you know, back from the hospital, she's at the beach house, and Layla goes to go check on Jamie at, at the at behalf of Asher, and pretty much, you know, that's when Jamie pretty much tells Layla, like, yo, I'm, I'm, like, I, I, I agree with Asher, he doesn't want you moving around, um, you know, he doesn't want you going back to work, but, you know, uh, you know, and I, I, I don't, I don't blame him for that, you know, he's, you know, he's, he's just, you know, being, you know, he wants you to make sure that you're okay, and he doesn't want to make sure that you're on, you're not on your feet, and you're, and you, even though you want to go back to work, I agree with Asher on you staying home, and, you know, resting and healing, and, you know, it, it was good because that's when Jamie, you know, said to Layla, like, I, I'm behind and I, like, I, I can't afford to, like, be off of work because I am I have so many, uh, you know, uh, medical bills that I need to pay off, like, thousands and thousands of, uh, you know, uh, working hours to pay off my medical bills. Like, I, I can't afford it. And that's when Layla comes up with the idea, well, look, like, what if we do a dollars for dudes, essentially? Like, what if we kind of uh, auction off, like, our friends? <laughs> And you know what I mean? It's funny because Jordan, I think I can't remember who was there at the time about auctioning. I think it was oh, it was Asher, and it was also uh, I can't. I think it was Jordan at the time. Asher and Jordan about you know the whole auctioning off the dude situation when they were at Slauson Cafe when you know uh, Layla's explaining to about you know about or I guess Asher is telling it like they were talking about how Jamie's situation and you know and he wishes that he was rich again to help pay off jamie's medical bills and that's of course when layla comes up with the whole dollars for dude situation and auctioning off them and you know it was it was a really good idea because you know it gives Lay Lay layla thought it gives olivia an opportunity where she can you know bid for spencer and kind of get alone time with spencer and kind of you know uh so she can seal the deal and kind of get back together with spencer so really layla's trying to help out olivia but also trying to help out jamie at the same time so pretty much right now layla is killing two birds with one stone like literally she's like i can help my friend out we all can but i can also help my other friend out and and you know and, and you know help you know and get back with spencer so this works out at the end of the day while also layla's having her own problems you know, with Clay in this episode, Clay's upset that Layla keeps mentioning the Keening name, even though it is Layla's name, but also, of course, Clay owns uh, Keening Records, so really, that's his label name, so he's like, you can't use that, that's like, it's, it's, uh, I, I forget what he said, like, oh, you know, you can't be doing that, and pretty much, and tries to end up suing Layla or something like that, or puts a, like, I forget what he did, I think he did, like, I don't, I don't really know what he filed, but he pretty much he's he's right now like against Layla and he's like and he's like saying you can't use your name because it's it's my name and you know they end up having like a like a head to head on the fact of you know like and, well I guess that kind of separates the factor it separates the factor because he doesn't want her using you know you know her name because it's it's affecting everybody on you know, it's affecting everybody wanting to go work with Clay at Keening Records making it sound like oh well you're you're saying that. The, the the Keening like uh, the the Keening Empire it goes with your name. It, you know what I mean. And if they want the best, you know, uh, you know, the best person to work with, they got to go to you, Layla, not go to Keening Records. And pretty much making it sound like that. It's just because it's called Keening Records doesn't mean it's gonna work. It, it, it's it's the fact of the person that makes it Keening Records of you know of the name. So you want to like you should come to us. Pretty much saying I guess kind of doing slander and if that makes any sense, saying like oh if you actually want the best of the best you have to go where the Keenings actually are, not just the name of, 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 uh, not just the name of a, of a company, of a, of a, you know, of a label. So, you know, he's upset about that and ends up coming in, like, into, you know, Layla's studio, essentially, with Jordan there, pretty much saying, oh, you know, you're a, you, you know, this isn't gonna fly, you know what I mean, and pretty much calling her names and stuff, and she's not getting offended at the idea of that, you know, she's, she's willing to play the game that Clay wants to play, but Jordan doesn't take it too well and kind of wants to defend her honor, wants to be like a knight and pretty much wants to fight her battles for her. When Layla's like, I don't need you to do that. I got it all sorted out. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to take this as a, pro, like in a professional way, a, a, a professional approach, but he doesn't want to do that. He just, Jordan likes to think with his fists. That's always, always been, he's such a hothead. So in this episode, you know, he had to like, it was all about him in this episode, pretty much realizing that I can't be fighting Layla's battles for her. I need to be one to have her back, not fight her battles for her. And I loved it because, you know, in the auction, you know, in the auction part of the episode, while well, everybody's getting auctioned off, and it was funny because Denise ends up walking in Slauson Cafe and pretty much thinks that she's in heaven. So I thought that was funny. Denise is in this episode as well. 
and she actually ends up telling uh, Asher, like, oh, what's going on here? He's like, oh, we're doing, a, you know, a, you know, a, a dollars for dudes, meaning that, you know, we're doing an auction. And she's like, wait a minute, you're not, you're not, you're not a white boy going to auction off his black friends, are you? Are you just willing, are you just wanting to get canceled? I thought that was hilarious. And she's like, uh-uh, let me, let me take over. Uh-uh, I'm going to be doing this. And she made it more fun, of course, because that's the Denise way, the Denise Patterson way. So it was really good because, you know, she ends up taking Jordan because the Layla ends up walking out because, you know, Clay, I think, you know, tried doing something where like that took her attention and he kind of feels like, oh my God, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, you know, I feel like I, like it, it hurts me that I can't get involved. It's like, what am I doing wrong? She doesn't want me fighting her battle, battles for her, but I can't just stand idly by while Clay's treating her like crap and is saying these things about my girlfriend. I'm not going to have, and, and my friend. So he kind of feels like, oh dang, like, and, and also, you know, he like, Layla kind of promised that she would be the one to auction for him so they could spend more time together in the meantime. Kind of, but you know, she gets distracted by what's going on with Clay, and Denise actually ends up, you know, bidding for him. And she's like, uh uh-uh, uh, no, Baker boy, you're with me. And you know, of course, we had a big auction off between uh, Alicia and Olivia. Olivia paid $500 to get like to get a moment with Spencer, and already right away, I was like. I was I wasn't gonna lie. I thought that was hot. I was like, shit. She really wants to spend some time with you, dude. Like, yeah, this is no joke. And the fact that Spencer tried to play it off, oh, the, the, this is just for our friend. It's nothing more. Like, tried to tell Alicia, like, no, you're you're good. It's like Olivia's doing this for our friend to help out our friend. And I'm like, no, five hundred dollars. And she, Alicia's like, no, it's not the fact of that. It's the fact of like it shows how much you know. It's like it's the fact. Yeah, she wants to help other friend, but. It's the fact of also that no one just pays five hundred dollars unless they still have feelings for one another, and pretty much saying like she still has feelings for you. That's why she was willing to pay five hundred dollars, dude. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, you can help out a friend, but paying to that extent, no. She wants to spend some time with you. She still has feelings for you, but Spencer couldn't just he didn't buy it. He's like, no, it's all to help out a friend. And in real, and in, in 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 you know, in seriousness. Like, I'm just glad that Alicia picked up on that saying, no, it's just like, it's the fact that she, like, she still cares about you. That's why she was, she was so willing to pay $500 and so to make sure nobody else could have you is because she still has feelings for you. And, you know, that was just, you know, that was just interesting to me in general. The fact of the, the where she ends up, the way she ends up one going up to like Spencer and Alicia saying like, oh, you know, uh. We haven't, we didn't formally get, or I guess as much as I didn't formally intro, introduce you guys to one another. This is Alicia. And, and Alicia's like, yeah, Spencer's new, Spencer's girlfriend. And, and Spencer's like, yeah, my, my girlfriend. And pretty much, you know, and Olivia's like, wait, I, I think you were the one, if I'm correct, that w- was at my father's birthday party, right? And pretty much you could just tell there's tension there. You could just tell it's the, it's the ex and the new girlfriend butting heads and Spencer knows about, he, he can feel the tension. And pretty much, you know, uh, Olivia's like, okay, let's go. You know, I know that uh, I have something that we both can do to, you know, to, 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 you know, we're, we're, I have something that you could do to let out your stress. Like, so let's go. It's been a long day. I have something you could do to let out your stress or something for both of us to do. Uh, oh yeah. Something for us to do to let out your stress. And right away, instantly, I, 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 I was like, I was like, oh, like, why does this sound in a way like you could take it sexual a little bit. I was like, it kind of sounds like that. If I'm being honest, I was like, wait, why does it sound like that? The way she like said it, I was like, damn, I was like, shit. Like, so I don't know. She might've done that kind of like added that little like flair to that. Just to pretty much, you know, say no spent, you know, this is, you, you know, when I'm here, you know, you know why I spent the $500 girl. Like could have been that to Alicia. Like, you know why I spent that money. I do have feelings for Spencer saying, I'll have something you can let out your, I have something that you can let out that stress to. And I was like, damn, I was like, shit. I was like, I know it's not that, but shit. Cause the, the whole auctioning, the, the whole, uh, dollar, uh, the, the dollars for dudes thing. It's, it's all like n- no sex, no nothing. It's just, you know, a date simple as that, just a normal date. So you can't, you, there's n- everything else is off the table. And they made that clear in the, with the whole instructions to the whole auctioning thing, even though, you know, damn well, people are going to be doing stuff, but you know, it's the fact of it is, is that, you know, Alicia kind of was like, like worried about the situation of like, oh no, she clearly has feelings for you. That's why she was willing to spend that money. Um, and you know, them going to the one place where they're just breaking stuff. I forget what, what places are like, or I forget what place, what kind of places, like the name of those kind of places where you break a whole bunch of shit. Um, but that was a really cool sequence and you could really tell that just like you, we missed that. We missed, we missed the connection that Olivia and Spencer have. And we kind of got that in that, in that moment. We got like more, we got more Spolivia. We haven't had Spolivia 
in a minute. So feeling that connection where it feels like, oh my God, it's like, yeah, that's the connection that we've all been missing, the connection that we, that, that we love that makes these co- these two characters so good together. And you know what I mean? It's just that, the, you know, just, you know, sparks fly when they're around one another. And we, we really felt it in that sequence where it's like, she really is showing that, you know, she like, w- like wants to get back with him. We really see that in this episode. And you can really tell that she's really wanting to be there for him. And we really just feel like it feels like the way it used to be. And, you know, the fact that he didn't pick up on that was crazy to me. They didn't pick up that she, like, really, like, uh, like about her wanting to be there. And, and, you know what I mean? And just having the, you know, and acting like how she used to when they were together. I'm shocked Spencer didn't pick up on that at all. He just really didn't. But he got to let out all of his stress about how he was feeling about Billy and everybody pretty much lying to him. And the only person that really didn't lie to him was Olivia. And that really kind of gave Olivia the opening to, like, okay, like, I can connect with him on this and make, and, and so I can show him how, how good things me, used to be with, how good, how good things used to be when we were together. And pretty much, you know, and, 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 and pretty much that's how I can, I can get him back and show him, like, you know, how good we used to be together and how I, I, I could be, how I can be there for him. And just kind of use the opportunity of what he was going through to kind of, like, get in and, and try to get him back. But, I just really enjoyed that sequence. I was like, wow, like, you know, it, we haven't really had this moment. And even Spencer kind of, you know, acknowledged the fact of, wow, you know, we, the, it, we did it. You know what I mean? We're, we're, we're finally friends again. And and that's not what she, Olivia wanted to hear. But it made me happy that Spencer just is happy to have Olivia back in his life and things feel kind of normal for once. Whether, you know, he knew that that was her intentions or not of, you know, like, of, you know, knew, knew her intentions of when to get back together with them. It's the fact of the intentions that he saw is that, you know, we're, we're, we're finally, you know, getting past our, our breakup and we're becoming friends. This is what I wanted. And that was just a beautiful scene, even though it was sad when he said, you know, we're, we're finally friends again. When it's like, I don't think he really wants to be with Alicia. I feel like especially at the end of the episode where Olivia tells Spencer at, you know, uh, at, uh, when, when, when Spencer goes to see Billy, um, pretty much, you know, ends up running into Olivia and, and Olivia ends up, you know, telling Spencer, I know you don't like, you know, you, you want to want people to tell you the truth. And I wanted to tell you, you know, I, I don't just want to be friends. I, I, I want you back. You know what I mean? I, I pretty much, I made a mistake. I want you back. Like, you know what I mean? And I could, that scene hurt me. Um, just the way, how beautifully, like, you know, you know, Olivia pretty much said she wants him back and the moment that Spencer just is like tearing up like and is kind of like you know doesn't know what to say essentially because he just started getting serious kind of with Alicia and I mean uh, due to the fact of Olivia kind of moving on with Noah at least that's what he thought it was just all bad communication to the fact of like you know it just it, it, like it, there were so many right moments where you could have been like okay they can get back together but there was always something happening you know what I mean like for instance, like he, it wasn't what it looked like with Noah and Olivia in the house with the candles. It wasn't what it looks like, but Spencer took it to be like, okay, she's moved on. I can move on. Even prior, he said he didn't want to. He wanted this, like he, he wasn't ready to move on. He kind of liked what him and Alicia were doing, but he saw Noah and Olivia with the candles and he thought, okay, if she's moving on. I need to move on. And she realized, oh my God, like look at the way Spencer's reaction was to me being with Noah with candles around and him thinking something's going on between me and Noah when it's like nothing's going on with me and Noah. I I, I only want you. And so that's when she kind of realized like, I, I want to be back with Spencer, but it was already too late because he made the decision off of her decision that I need to move on. So it's like, it's always bad timing with them. And I feel like I'm really hoping that I feel like we're not going to know if they're going to get together probably until the end of the season. Probably, I, I can imagine, I hope it's at the end of the season and they don't try to drag this out into season six. But that just really frustrated me. I I, I really felt like Olivia just felt just, the I, I feel like Olivia felt like the way the character used to feel, used to feel, you know what I mean? Back in, back before all the whole drama happened with, you know, with the whole, you know, uh, Coach Garrett and, uh, and what and Wade and all that crap. I feel like she kind of felt like how she felt like before, before all the drama. So getting old Olivia back made me really happy because I did not like the 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 the, the way the writers were writing Olivia's character until this episode. I was like, it, it feels like we're have we have Olivia back. Honestly, I I was literally smitten. I was smiling from ear to ear. I was like, this is the Olivia I've been missing. Like I have not been liking the way the writers have been writing her because it's just didn't feel like Olivia to me. So I really loved this episode and especially, you know, you know, while, while that was going on in the auction, I, I also want to mention that 
that's when JJ ends up coming in and actually ends up auctioning on Asher and pretty much like like bids a thousand dollars to get Asher pretty much to tell Asher like I can't believe you told no one to tell me because you thought I was going to make this into a joke and you didn't tell me that Jamie needed help and this is for Jamie like he underestimated Asher really underestimated uh JJ on thinking that he was going to make it into a joke and not want to help out Jamie. I think Asher was an asshole personally because of that. Because I was like, JJ would never try to make it about him or make it a joke. He clearly would want to be there for Jamie. You you make him sound like he's a monster. When it's in reality, it's like Jamie even wanted you to keep... Well, actually, I think, I don't know if it was even Jamie that suggested that you'll keep checking in on, on, on JJ. I, I can't remember if it was Layla or who who said it. That said, oh, you know, you should you shouldn't give up on JJ. You should make sure that you to tell him that you're gonna that you'll be there for him. And he never did it. And he just ignored whoever gave him that good advice. And you just saw how upset JJ was. And pretty much the reason that JJ auctioned on Asher was not only because he was angry about that, it was because he missed Asher, and 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 Asher missed JJ. And they end up sumo wrestling in the beach house. Was that which that was a funny sequence that was actually going on. Them you know like pretty much you know wrestling with one another at like like as sumo wrestlers. So I thought that were like they were in big sumo suits and they were like sumo wrestling and pretty much fighting out their anger. And then they actually ended it. And while that was going on, we actually had like a montage between them doing that and Spencer and Olivia in the, in that break and breaking shit in that one room. So I really did like that kind of, you know, dynamic of them doing kind of like, you know, back and forth between them doing those activities. Um, but I love how they end it. You know, they talk about, and then they end up being in the hot tub and they pretty much, you know, just, you know, said that they settled it, you know, they're friends now they're sitting in the hot tub and they're kind of like, you know, he's like, yeah, he's like, you know, Asher's like, I'll, I'll be a little bit less, you know, uh, judgmental. And, you know, that's when, uh, you know, uh, was it, uh, JJ's like, well, you know, I, I need to be, you know, you, I understand, you know, you, you always wanted to become a coach and this is your dream and I, and I should have been there for you and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to let you down or whatever. I'm going to, you know, and he's like, and he's, or he's like, oh, he's like, I'm going to show, I'm going to show out next time. I'm going to show out and, and show people that I'm good. And he's like, and he's like, uh, he's like, I'm going to be better. And then Asher's like, I, I didn't, I don't, I don't not like think like, uh, less of you JJ I just want people to see how good you are and and, and uh, what you do on, on the field and pretty much you know that was just a beautiful sequence but really in reality while well, you know at the end of the episode while they're all surprising Jamie telling her that her you know medical bills are all paid off JJ is drinking still and I and Olivia picked up on it saying like you know I, you know you're drink you you I could see that you're drinking a lot JJ and I, I don't want you spiraling I, I know as a former addict that I'm, that this is you're going to be spiraling out if you keep going down this path, and it makes me really worried that like I I have a bad feeling about JJ still. I, I I'm scared what the writers might do. I don't want it where like he the writers end up killing him off or something like that or something bad ends up happening. I really I, I don't really know why they like we still don't get we still don't really have the reason why JJ's been acting the way he's been acting really. Besides the fact that he was running away from Asher, that's what he explained, that's why he left. But it doesn't explain why he's been drinking so much and why he's been doing it, like acting the way he's been acting. They still haven't given that that direct answer and, it, and, it, and, it, uh, and it's just really messed up from a writer's perspective that they're not giving us the answer on why they, they made our character an alcoholic. They're not really giving us a reason why. And I do think they need to address why he's been acting the way he's been acting, why he's been drinking so much. So... I hope they really, you know, the writers tell us why, because there's something serious, serious with that situation and that, and that kind of, in that story with that character with JJ, because we know that's not our, how JJ has been acts. We know that's not our character, JJ. So it's kind of like, I, I, I want to know why they, why they made those choices. Why is he acting like this? Why is he, why is he going down this, uh, you know, alcoholic path? Like what, what's going on in his life? We don't really know. Um, so I'm hoping we'll get those answers. I don't know if we will. It's just, I was just so happy to see JJ back and I'm really hoping things they'll, they'll address those things with that character and we can get back like, and he can get back to the way he used to be. Um, I just don't know if that's what they're going to be doing. Um, but honestly, though, with everything else, with the whole preach situation, we definitely got to talk about that. Um, with, uh, Coop trying to help preach, get ready for his trial for custody of Amina. That was, that was craziness because, you know, Coop was given hard answers to preach, but it's the answers that, that the lawyers are going to be asking him about, you know, they're going to like try to like, you know, uh, Amina's uh, grandparents' lawyers are, are going to like their lawyer, like, uh, yeah, lawyers are going to like, you know, try to, you know, pretty much, you know, 
you know, like, uh, pretty much trying to make it, are going to try to make it hard for Pre to make it sound like he is a fit father to have a mean it. They're going to do that to him. So Coop's trying to just get them ready. Like, okay, these are what the lawyers are going to ask him. Like, I mean, it, like, I mean, his grandparents' lawyers, they're going to be asking these questions and, and, and cause they're going to be fighting for the grandparents to have Amina and you not to have Amina. So I'm trying to get you ready to, so you can defend yourself and, and you can be prepared for these, these, these questions that they're going to ask you. And, you know, it's, it's really sad because, you know, in this, you know, he feels like, you know, I, I can't get a better place until I get a permanent position at, at South Crenshaw. Like I, I don't have a permanent position. I'm kind of just you know, like I, I like I'm, I only work there part time. I don't have a permanent position, so I can't get more money to get a better place for Amina to show the lawyers that I I am a fit parent and show everybody that I'm a fit parent for Amina. And of course, Coop's like they're gonna look at your record. They're gonna look at where you live. They're gonna work, see that you don't have a stable job. Like they're gonna look at these things that you need to fix. And it's not the fact that you know sh like he was making it sound like. Coop doesn't feel like they I mean, it's not like Coop doesn't think that he's a fit to have a I mean he's, and it's like no it's not about that I think you're I know that you're a fit parent I know who you are they don't know who you are you need to defend yourself and you know he pretty much you know ends up asking Billy but and right away I was like great or like I guess Coop suggests I want you ask Billy to try to get you a, a, a more permanent job at South Crunch on and, and I thought right away Billy's leaving Billy's screwing over everybody and that's facts and that's exactly what Spencer was trying to say to, to, you know, Grace saying, you know, I thought we, we both underestimated Billy and him kind of, you know, we think we thought that he was all for, all for everybody, but he's, he ends up being about himself uh, and about him taking the position. He ended up, you know, thinking about himself and being about himself and not being about helping coach Kenny out. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it kind of, you know, you know, it kind of, the, the situation of him leaving South Crenshaw, leaving all these kids behind, not being the head coach over at South Crenshaw anymore, not being the principal at South Crenshaw anymore, he's screwing over the kids that he's getting ready for the combine, he's screwing over, you know, uh, all these students of being their teacher, and also screwing over Preach on not giving him a permanent position at South Crenshaw to help, so he can get more pay, so he can get a better place, so he can keep Amina. He's really screwing over a lot of people in his choice to want to go to, you know, to a GAU. When in reality, he doesn't need to go to GAU. And that's what Spencer says at the end of this episode when he ends up talking to, you know, Billy saying, you don't need to go to GAU. We're good there. You are, are, you are not just, you know, a coach for them there and a principal. You are a father figure. That's who you are, Billy. You're a father figure. Some, some, you know, you, you are a father figure that some, that some kids may not, like, um, you are a father to some kids that, you know, don't even know their own father and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So you can't just leave. You 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 would you would be a good coach at GAU, but you would you are a great man at South Crenshaw in here. So like what do you want to be? You know what I mean? A great man here or a good coach? And it's like, you know what I mean? It's like you he needs to be a great man. He needs to he already sacrificed too much, and he ends up talking about you know you know really kind of connecting with Preach earlier in the episode, trying to stop Preach from getting back in the game because that's what Preach is about to do because you know because you know uh, you know Billy ends up telling Preach like oh I'm, I turned in my resignation I'm I'm gonna be leaving and he's like oh, he's like oh pretty soon if you're if you're gonna be, if you're leaving pretty soon I'm gonna be leaving I'm like I'm not gonna have any just any like like, you know what I mean? Uh, part-time job. I'm going to be, I'm going to be gone. You're the only reason that I'm still here. And he, of course, Billy's like, oh, that's not true. People saw how good you are and, and, and what you do. But in reality, it's like, no, he knows that if you leave, I'm going to be kicked next. And it's like, he ends up trying to stop, you know, preach from getting back in the game. I don't know if he ended up going through with whatever that girl wanted him to do and delivering that package of, of, of whatever. Um, but you know, he, you know, Billy actually ends up coming through and actually ends up getting, you know, preach a permanent job in his own classroom to be a teacher. But it's like, did he do what he did? I'm not quite sure. Did he, did he not do it? And he's, and he's going to do this. Who knows? I feel like he did do it and it's going to screw, it's going to screw over his chances, regardless of him becoming a teacher and him getting the money that he needs in the new place that he needs. It's going to come back around where that probably, if he did do it, that girl's going to want more for from him. And I could see somehow like, things getting worse before they get good, get good, good for him because he'll realize I made the wrong decision when I should have just trusted in the friends and the people around me to get me through this tough time. I, I don't know. I don't know what, what's going to go on with preach if he did do it or if he didn't do it. But you know, it, it's crazy to me because it's like Billy needs to stay there. He's like, he did. He, he told preach like I, I've sacrificed when, when preach is like, you're nothing like me about, you know, about, you know, me in, in the game and stuff like that and, and what I need to do to survive and do and do all this stuff. And he's like, well, he's like, 
yeah, but he's or like, or about me not having any time. Yeah, you're nothing like like me. I me not having enough time. You know, with Amina and all that stuff. He's like, yeah, well, he's like, I can kind of relate because I wasn't there when Olivia took her first steps. I wasn't there when she she went to the first day of school. I was, you know, what I mean, and and before I knew the signs, you know, she OD'd and stuff like that, and and all the signs were there, and I I didn't pick them up, and I got a second chance to be the, to be a good father, and I want that opportunity where you you can have this chance to to be the good father that you that I mean and knows that you are and it's like I don't know if again preach did it or not I feel like he did and I feel like him you know when he was crying about him having the classroom I feel like that was him like oh shit like I, I did the thing and I feel like that's gonna I feel like you know that's gonna come back and 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 spite me essentially that I did the thing that I did and yeah I'm, I'm happy about this situation but I feel like that could screw me over and I feel like that if he did do it it definitely will screw him over and that girl will want more from him I just don't know what's the case, what the case may be, but even, you know, Billy acknowledged that he's done stuff for him in sacrifice to, you know, him missing out on his kid's childhood and, and pretty much him not noticing the signs before Olivia OD'd, you know what I mean? It's like, so he even knows that I put myself first, I can't be doing that anymore because I, I, I end up, you know, letting people down and essentially he would let down preach, he would let down the this, this students of him coaching at, at South Crenshaw, all to be in a comfy position and all, and all and be about himself and being selfish to go to GAU when they don't really need him. So I understand it's like, yo, I hope Billy chooses the right decision. I, clearly, it looks like he's he doesn't because he, I'm going to play, uh, you know, next week's episode, episode, I think it's episode 11 right now. There's going to be plenty of coaches in my future, but only one dad. My favorite team. Yeah. Make things right with Spencer. I already said my piece. Did you? It's gonna be a bright future. At all costs. As you guys can see in, in episode 11, it looks like he chose the decision of kind of being at, at GAU a little bit. It kind of looks like that's what he chose. And, you know, I don't know what it is with the, with the whole bus bus it looks like a bus crash situation i don't know what that's all about but it, it's a crazy episode next week on like i think it, if, if not he's already choosing to be at gau this is the episode where he kind of makes that decision on top of spencer really not you know him not forgiving you know uh billy for him lying and stuff like that him letting everybody else down on his on his choice to kind of want to be selfish and and and, and make his own decision about doing that when they really don't need him there and everybody needs him over there so it's kind of like, you know, it's just him being disappointed Spencer and in and, and, uh, Billy's decision. And in reality, you know, Spencer feels like it's not even the decision that needs to be thought of really hard. It's like you need to make the right decision, which is staying at South Crenshaw. People need you there. We do not need you at GAU. But Billy, in his way, knows that, but he wants to be selfish and be over there. He wants to he wants to do that. And, I'm, and, and that's just... And, and Billy acknowledged that he was selfish to make his own choices to... to to, and, and missing all that time. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, I don't know. I'm excited to see what he chooses. I hope he makes the right decision. Um, and yeah, I, I really, I've never been more invested in an All-American episode than I think I've been in this episode. It just felt like All-American. And I mean, especially next week with hopefully us getting some football stuff and hopefully more episodes to, of football to come when the season actually starts for football in the show. I don't know. I'm just super excited to see more football and I hope we get more football. And I feel like this episode made me feel like we're kind of getting back on track. Unfortunately, we, we didn't see patience in this episode. So I don't know really what's going on with patience. Um, and that one, and that one fan that she's kind of flirting with on, on like on, on messaging privately, even though she said she didn't want to, like she would never flirt with a fan or get involved with a fan on top of, you know, everything that's going on with patience where she's kind of like editing her photos to make, you know, her, her features look different. Um, just because she cares about what the public thinks, even though I don't feel like that's Patience's character, that they kind of, I, I don't know, it just feels like Patience never gave a shit about what people think of her, so I find that weird that, 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 that's the plot line they're, they're doing with that character, but I'm a little worried about that, but other than that, I mean, this was just a really good episode, and I'm excited to see where the rest of the season goes, I was literally getting ready to jump ship after the, after the end of season five, because I just have not been liking the season as much. But honestly, if this keeps continuing with this good momentum and we kind of get back to how things used to be, 
I'm, I'll be really pumped to go into season six. I, I still think season six should be the last season. I don't know if it will be, but guys, I'm really curious to know what did you guys think about episode 10 of All American season five. Also, if you're getting, if you're here, if you are new to the channel, subscribe to the channel, put those notifications, like this video. I would love to have you guys here, part of the family, part of the channel. We're all about spreading love, positivity, and motivation. And yet again, guys, we are almost to 700 subscribers. Um, so I would really love it again if you subscribe to the channel, put those notifications, and like this video here if you are new. Um, my initial goal is to get to 1,000 before the end of this year, and I know we can do that. Um, and yeah, guys, again, uh, that was the video. I hope everybody has a great day, a safe day, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.